Hi, we're the Fine Brothers. And consider yourselves warned. We're about to spoil the first four and a half seasons of Breaking Bad. So grab a bucket of Los Pollos Hermanos and a bottle of Schrader Brown. Get ready to be all caught up in time for the final episode. It all happens in one take. In under eight minutes. Starting now. It all began with a middle-aged man and his tidy whities Hey, that's not just any man. That's Walter White, world's best meth cook. But before that, Walt was just a boring old family man teaching high school chemistry and a part-time car wash attendant. His teenage son, Walt Jr., suffers from cerebral palsy, while his pregnant wife, Skylar, suffers from being a ball buster. She's not as bad as her klepto sister Marie, who's married to lovable D.E. Age and Hank Schrader, though. Walt's life takes a turn for the worst after he's diagnosed with inoperable cancer and given two years to live. He bumps into his former student, Jesse Pinkman, who's a meth dealer. To provide for his family before he dies, he set up a meth lab in Winnebago, and Walt uses his science skills to create high-quality meth. After a running with drug dealers Emilio and Crazy 8, Walt tries to gas them to death, and though Crazy 8 survives, Walt is able to bring himself to kill him, too. R.I.P. Emilio and Crazy 8. And Jesse learns a valuable lesson. If you're going to break down a body with hydrofluoric acid, use a plastic bin. Duh! Walt and Jesse need a meth distributor, and unless Crazy 8's even crazier successor, Tuco. Jesse tries to make a deal with Tuco, and Tuco beats the crap out of him. So Walt shaves his head, takes matters into his own hands, and boom! Heisenberg is born. And he's a badass! All is well until Walt and Jesse run out of pseudo, a key ingredient for making meth. They seal methamine, an alternative ingredient, which gives their product a distinctive blue color. This show is so educational! Then a charred one-eyed stuffed bear is found floating in Walt's pool. Wait, did you just move on to season two? Indeed I did! Walt and Jesse plot to kill Tuco after they watch him beat one of its head lieutenants to death. R.I.P. No dose. Tuco kidnaps Walt and Jesse and takes them to a house with his uncle Hector, whose only form of communication is hitting a... Tuco tries to kill Walt and Jesse, but they escape. Meanwhile, Hank, who believes Jesse is Walt's pot dealer, tracks down Jesse's car only to discover Tuco and Hank kills him. R.I.P. Tuco. Hank is rewarded with a dangerous promotion in El Paso. While there, he finds the severed head of a DA informant that's been strapped to a turtle bomb. R.I.P. Tortuga. Walt's family life is falling apart. His wife has gone back to work and has become increasingly suspicious of his secret activities. And his son wants to be called Flynn because I guess that's a cool name. Business isn't any better. One of Walt and Jesse's dealers is shot by a preteen gangster. R.I.P. Combo. Wait, which one was Combo? And another is busted by not so undercover cops in an effort to track down the mysterious Heisenberg. Left without any options, Walt and Jesse enlist the help of criminal attorney Saul Goodman. When your badger is captured by the Albuquerque PD, you better call Saul. Saul gets an s to pretend to be Heisenberg and take the fall, and also hooks him up with a big-time distributor, beloved Los Poyos Hermanos franchise owner and ruthless drug kingpin Gus Fring. Gus is reluctant to work with Jesse, who's become a heroin addict thanks to his relationship with the bee from Apartment 23. Um, wrong show. Her name is Jane. Yeah, but whatever. Jane acts like a bee when she threatens to snitch on Walt if he doesn't pay her and Jesse. Which is why Walt lets Jane die when he discovers her choking on her own vomit after Jesse and her were passed out from a heroin binge. R.I.P. B. I mean Jane. Saul sends Gus's head of security, Mike, to make sure Jesse isn't connected to her death. As Jesse grieves, Walt bonds with his newborn daughter, Holly, whose birth he missed because of a drug deal. And Skylar starts flirting with her boss, Ted, as she discovers he's cooking the books. At least he's not cooking math. She ends up leaving Walt, whose cancer's in remission after an experimental medical treatment. There goes that entire storyline and a major reason why we all started watching the show. And Jesse goes to rehab, but just about wraps up season two. Wait, what about the charred one-eyed stuffed bear? Jane's dad is an air traffic controller distraught over his daughter's death, who accidentally caused two planes to collide, spreading debris across Albuquerque, including the bear. Duh! RAP 167 passengers. On to season three, with two goes speaking, axe-wielding twin cousins who are looking to exact revenge on Walt. Gus stops them from killing Walt, even though Walt is on a cooking hiatus, which is pissing Gus off. Skylar is now aware of Walt's notorious second cell phone and an influx of fat stacks, so she calls Walt out on being a drug dealer, asks for a divorce, and even f***ing Ted! Finally, Gus offers Walt mega cash in the greatest meth lab ever assembled, and our old friend Heisenberg is finally back in the game. Walt, divorce papers freshly signed, and ego as big as Kanye, leaves Jesse behind and is paired with chemistry enthusiast and self-proclaimed nerd, Gail Bedecker. Meanwhile, Hank lets his obsession with fighting Heisenberg get the best of him. He beats the crap out of Jesse, who he suspects is connected to Heisenberg. He then is forced to hand in his badge. Worse, Gus gives him up to the twins for holding off on killing Walt. During the battle, Hank gets shot, but is able to crush one twin with his SUV and blow the other one's brains out, literally. R.I.P. Twin Cousins. And R.I.P. Innocent Bystander. Walt and Skylar, who abandoned Ted, join forces to help pay for Hank's medical bills and buy the car wash where Walt worked in order to launder the drug money. Jesse ends up becoming obsessed with avenging the death of Combo's killer. Which leads to the murder of Combo's young assassin, who just so happened to be the brother of Jesse's new girlfriend, Andrea. This results in Jesse confronting the two foot soldiers. R.I.P. Andrea's brother. And hold on, which one was Combo? The two foot soldiers aren't in the mood for Jesse's whining and prepare to cap his ass too. But before they can pull the trigger, the kitty killers are run over by a car driven by. Walt? That's right, Walt has come back to save Jesse and tells him to run. Gus is none too pleased about all this because Andrew's brother and the two foot soldiers work for him. To prevent retaliation from Gus, Walt plans to kill the only person that can replace him. Good old Gail. Jesse rolls up to Gail's apartment, holds Gail up at gunpoint, pulls the trigger, and fade to black. Ugh, oh, looks like we'll have to wait until season four to find out what happened. Jesse killed Gail. R.I.P. Gail. You didn't deserve it. Season four brings us into Jesse trying to stay clean while still cooking meth with Walt for a not happy about it. Gus, who also has a little problem. Crystal obsessed Hank is hot on his trail. Hank has finally snapped out of his crippling depression. We decided to skip over that part because it was horribly boring. He's back in the saddle after discovering Heisenberg is back on the scene. He even ropes Walt into the investigation by asking him if he can figure out who the WW is in Gail's notebook. Hank even jokes that it could be Walt. <laughs> jokes on you, Hank. Meanwhile, the Mexican cartel has beef with Gus because he defied orders to kill Walt. So Uncle Hector, you remember Uncle Hector, right? 
Well, it turns out Gus and Hector used to work together and hate each other. Long story short, Hector and Gus's bad blood results in a massive shootout. All right, he a lot of dudes. But Gus and his head of security, Mike, are saved by Jesse, who Gus has been taking under his wing to turn on Walt. On, on the other side, Walt is telling Jesse that Gus is the enemy and gives Jesse rice to poison him. Jesse proclaims his allegiance to Team Gus and lets Walt get fired. He even puts a gun to Walt's head. Because Gus said it was Walt who poisoned Andrew's son. Saul, meanwhile, feels caught in the middle of the Gus Walt war and gets the hell out of Dodge and takes a trip to the altered state of Georgia, Massachusetts. Um, wrong show. Before he leaves, looks like Saul's boys accidentally kills Ted after Ted tries to blackmail Skyler, even though she gave him $600,000 to help cover his debt to the Who IRS. Who cares about Ted? Get back to the drug wars. Jesse discovers a cigarette which was used to conceal the ricin capsule is missing, and Walt convinces Jesse that it was actually Gus who poisoned Andrew's son. Enraged, Jesse helps Walt plot to eliminate Gus once and for all. Walt concocts a plan with Hector, but we aren't sure what, and we see Hector going to the DEA. Gus finds out and thinking that Hector is a rat goes to kill him with a lethal injection, but Hector rings his... And boom, goes the pipe bomb. R.I.P. Hector. R.I.P. Gus. Wait. Gus is still alive. What? Really? But half his face has been blown off. Okay, now he's dead. R.I.P. Gus. And R.I.P. Meth Lab, which is torched by Walt and Jesse. Oh, and by the way, it was Walt who actually poisoned Andrea's son. That ruthless, cold-hearted bastard! Which brings us to season five, or at least half of it. Walt, Jesse, and Mike attempt to salvage Gus's meth business. They learned the police seized Gus's laptop, and Jesse comes up with using a magnet to destroy the laptop. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! Problem solved! Meanwhile, Ted... Not him again. Didn't actually die, but Skylar does manage with the fear of God in him, and he promises to keep his mouth shut. Also, keeping his mouth shut suicide victim Air Schuler. R.I.P. Air Schuler. Air was an executive at Madrigal Electromotive who's being investigated for its involvement with Los Poyos Hermanos. Afraid that her co-workers would rat on her, another Madrigal executive, Lydia, asked Mike to take out anyone that was involved in the chicken chain side business. He turns her down because she's insane. What I find insane is how much this time the show is spending on new characters. Mike insists that his former Madrigal associates get a cut from the new business in order to keep them quiet, which pisses Walt off. Walt does, however, come up with a brilliant idea of teaming up with exterminators to cook meth in fumigated houses. And so the Vominos Pests era begins. And nearly ends and they run out of meth. I mean, are they going to fix that? Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! No, they're going to rob a train. Duh. The plan goes off without a hitch, minus a tarantula-obsessed juvenile witness their new associate Todd kills. R.I.P. Kid. Didn't Todd also kill that dude who tried to rape his girlfriend? Um, wrong show. Jesse can't deal with the death of another kid and quits the biz again. And with the feds on his ass, Mike decides that he's ready to retire, but the feds get his lawyer to snitch on him. Walt finds out Dan squealed, so he warns Mike, but ends up killing Mike. R.I.P. Mike. Breaking bad. Killing the best characters and wasting time on terrible new ones. Walt gets the names of Mike's associates from Lydia and has them killed along with Mike's rat lawyer. R.I.P. Associates and Rat Lawyer. Lydia brings Walt's blue meth to the Czech Republic, resulting in an avalanche of fat stacks for Walt. He gives Jesse a share of the bounty and finally capitulates to Skylar and stops cooking. Looks like he's home free. That is until Hank takes a crap in Walt's bathroom and reads Walt's copy of Leaves of Grass. He notices the book is inscribed by GB to my other favorite WW. Hank remembers the initial GB and WW from Gale's Notebooks. And holy Hank's crap, he knows that Walt is Heisenberg. So now you're all caught up with the show. Be sure to watch the season five part two premiere on August 11th to find out what happens next. Will Hank give up Walt? Will Jesse stay clean? Will Skylar be less annoyed? Will half face Gus rise from the dead for a crossover episode with The Walking Dead? Guess we'll all find out soon. In the meantime, I've got some cooking to do. Why did you take off your suit?